So today I'm out, but I don't want you guys to get too far behind. So I thought we'd uh, I'd show you a few of these uh, kind of typical acid base calculations. So what we have is, is several things. There is a typo. This is at the end of your note sheet that you got yesterday. Uh, that is supposed to be a 1.5 molar solution. But these are kind of typical things. Calculate the pH of a couple acids. Um, when are you talking about equilibrium? Using the 5% rule and the, uh, calculating a percent dissociation. So let's get to it. So the first thing is calculating the pH of a 1 point or a 0.15 molar uh, HNO3 nitric acid solution. Now, first thing, you got to remember this is a strong acid. And because it's, it's a strong acid, we will have 100% association of the acid into ions, which actually makes things pretty easy to figure out. So we have nitric acid, we have our water, we're doing a Brunsted Lowry type definition. Uh, we'll get hydronium ions and nitrate ions as well. Now, to start off, we have a 0.15 molar nitric acid. Water's a liquid, and we don't have any products yet. By definition, since nitric acid will dissociate 100%, at the end of things, initially we're here, when we get to the end, we've got zero, which means this has to increase... Uh, by 0.15, this one also increases by the same amount, although we're not concerned about that because the thing we're looking at is pH. And remember, pH is the opposite of the log of the hydronium or hydrogen ion concentration, if you prefer, um, to give us a number, somewhere between typically 0 and 14. Since this is an acid, I'd expect the pH to be well below 7. Since this is, this is a strong acid, it's probably going to be less than one. So pretty much all we need to do at this point is to really just plug in our value, 0.15, and do the math. Now, in doing that, we're going to take the negative log of 0.15. Um, I got negative 0.8. Two, four. And because we're going to take the opposite of the log, that's going to result in a pH of 0.824, so below 1, like I thought. So there's our pH value. Pretty straightforward. Strong acids and strong bases as well are pretty easy to calculate pH values because they just all dissociate. In our second case, we have hydrofluoric acid. As you can see, they give a Ka value, which means that we have a weak acid. This becomes a little more complex. I need to fix this. This is supposed to be a 1.5 molar solution. Now, which of these two situations, the nitric acid or the hydrofluoric acid, is equilibrium? Well, because we have a weak acid Ka, we'll have an equilibrium case in, in, this, uh, in this example. So the first thing I'll do is go ahead and write down my reaction, HF. So it's a solution. It's a water solution. So we'll have it reacting with water, fronts to Lowry. And we're going to get the hydronium and fluoride ions as our products. Because this is an equilibrium, we can use an ice table. Now, you probably reach a point where the ice tables aren't going to be really completely necessary, but they're a nice way to organize your work and your thinking uh, in approaching the problem. So we have to look at where do we start? Well, we have a 1.5 molarity solution. Again, water isn't going to count. No products yet. Now the difference in comparison is, in this particular case, the change it will decrease, but we don't know by how much, because it's an incomplete ionization. So at equilibrium, we'll have 1.5 minus x. We will have, these will have to increase by x and by x. So here's our equilibrium values. Now the equilibrium values, of course, need to go into an equilibrium expression. So our equilibrium expression here, Ka, 
This is an acid because it makes hydronium ions. Uh, Ka is equal to the hydronium chloride concentrations over the HF aqueous solution itself. Water doesn't count because it's a liquid. We already know what Ka is. 7.2 times 10 to the negative fourth, which actually for a weak acid is kind of on the strong end of weak acids. So be aware of that. This is a kind of a large-ish um, constant or Ka value. Now these two values, H3O and, H and F, are the same, so we can simplify that to being essentially x squared. Now, the bottom part of this, the 1.5 minus x, hopefully you realize, hey, Ka is a small number. If Ka equilibrium constant is small, then the change x should be small. And it certainly is if we compare 1.5 to the Ka, uh, 7 to the negative fourth, Ka is quite a bit smaller. And so we'd anticipate that approximately when we get all done with equilibrium, we're going to still have 1.5 molarity. Now going through and then we could just, it's a matter of solving for x. When I did my math, and hopefully I did it right, it's in a bit of a hurry, um, 0 0.0329 is the value that I got for x. So that gets us almost all the way to where we need to be. Remember, we're trying to find the pH. So now, since we know our x value is equal to the hydronium ion concentration, and pH is related to that hydronium concentration, pH equals negative log of 0 0.329, 03, whoops, 0 0.329, that's going to make a difference. And when I worked out the value for this, I got a 1.48. Now, I did want to point something out, actually, here, and and that is the pH values. Um, they're kind of odd when it comes to sig figs. pH is a logarithmic scale. It's based on uh, multiples of 10 or jumps of 10. So actually in a pH number, the only two numbers that actually count as sig figs, well in this case, it's, it's the decimals. Anything after the first number here, so there's actually only two sig figs in that answer, 1.48. That's considered correct to two sig figs. My 1.5 appears two sig figs. My 7.2 to the negative fourth is two sig figs, so 1.48 as a pH would be considered correct sig figs. Now, in figuring this answer out, really we just applied what we did with equilibrium before. We set up a reaction, then we did an ice table, so we kept track of what we were doing. Um, we made the assumption that x is small because our k value is small. We wrote a ka expression, and then pretty much it's putting in the values to uh, solve for our unknown thing. In this case, we needed hydronium ions. Now, we figured this thing out. We figured out that the pH is 1.48, and one of the things that we should always do is check the 5% rule. Now, the 5% rule simply states that if you look at the value x that you calculated, remember x was 0 0.0, Three two nine. Is X really small compared to my original right, my original concentration of one point five molarity? So is it five percent? Well point zero three two nine over one point five times one hundred. I got a value of 2.2%. So that's only 2% of the total, so that's smaller than 5%. So we would say that, yes, we're less than, the, we're below 5%. So our approximation that x was small compared to 1.5 is correct. That simplified all of our calculations. Uh, 
Now, if you end up with being 5% or actually bigger than 5%, then actually you have to solve the quadratic. That's really the only difference. Do you have to solve the quadratic or not? So in this case, we didn't need to do it. Um, my original concentration, 0.15, actually turns out that it comes out to be about 6% or 7%, which means I would have had to go back and change and solve the quadratic. So um, that was my little, my little typo error there. Um, that simplified our calculations on this example. Now, second, you might be asked this sort of question. What's the percent association of hydrofluoric acid? Well, in this case, it turns out that pretty much what you do is exactly all the same things we've already done. And it's really asking, so what percent of the original 1.5 dissociated? Well, we've actually already calculated it. It turns out that the 5% rule calculation for us is pretty much exactly the same as the percent dissociation. This is the amount that turned into hydronium. This is the amount of HF that we had in the beginning. So the top number is the amount that's associated. The bottom number is how much we had. So actually the answer to the percent association is, is exactly the same, 2.2%. So that, that was not bad. Um, sometimes you're simply given the Ka of an acid and a concentration and they cal and say, you know, calculate the percent association. Well, it's pretty much what we did to calculate the pH. You go through all the same steps um, to figure out you have x squared over the original. Remember, we had this x squared over the original concentration. You can't see me pointing at it. <laughs> I forget. x squared over the original concentration um, to get the value of x. And then from there, we can use that number to calculate the percent association. So it's pretty straightforward. So what I would like you guys to work on, and this is assuming you did the first set of questions I gave you previously, uh, to work on these questions from chapter 14. I think they're pretty good representative um, skills that you'll need to have for working through acid base. When we take a look at, of course, this unit exam, this unit test, as well as the AP exam. So we'll see you on Wednesday and I hope you have a good rest of the period. Talk to you soon.